When people see that the pre-owned price for Rolex and Patek go down, they kind of use it as a barometer of what's happening within the watch market, that the watch market is softening. On the other side of that, when brands like Oris start using real gold, solid gold, within their watches, I think we should use that as a barometer for what the watch market is doing, perhaps on the new side. Oris using gold in their watches, I think is quite a big statement. Similar to the Wings of Hope video, when I saw Oriset Watches of Wonders, this was one of the watches that really stood out to me as well. Not necessarily for the looks of it, but for the statement of it. Oris, I see Oris as a no-nonsense brand. That's why I like talking about them so much, because within the watch world, they are the least bullshitty than all of the watch brands. They tell you how things actually are. They don't pretend that something is in-house when it isn't in-house. When they develop a new movement, they say this is in-house developed, not in-house manufactured. This is a completely different topic, but the whole in-house debate is what I feel makes the watch world so epically murky. Yet Oris, when they launch a new movement, they say this is in-house developed. We don't make it, but we developed it. The, the purpose of saying all that is how Oris described the bezel on this watch. I'll go through the whole specs, but the bezel is described as 18 karat yellow gold on the edge. Because when you look at a bezel, exactly like when you look at a bezel on a Rolex, you assume the whole thing is just solid gold. It isn't. It's just a little cage of gold. And Oris don't want you to think this whole thing is gold because it's part ceramic and underneath there's a bit of air and a couple of steel springs. They don't want you to think this is solid gold. So they tell you that the edge is gold. That, that's it. I love that. I love that that blatant down-to-earth honesty from Oris. I, I think it's it's so cool that they do that. Anyway, the, the specs on this are interesting. This is a 41.5 millimeter wide case, which is typically quite large. For me, I think it's quite large, although I'm wearing a 42 millimeter wide watch, but this wears really very small. I'd, I'd say, I haven't worn my Black Bay 58 for a while, but I'd say it has a similar feel, the compactness of the case, the way it wears on the wrist, it feels like a very tidy package. Look, look, look at that. So my wrists are 16 and a half centimeters or, or around seven and a half inches in, in uh, circumference. But that's a very, very tidy package. It's, it's a, a perfectly sized package, I think. Let's go through the rest of the specifications on this thing. So the watch is 41.5 millimeters wide. As mentioned, it's got an 18 karat gold edge bezel, which has a blue or green, whichever you choose, ceramic insert. We have a domed sapphire crystal with anti-reflective coating on both the top and underside of it. We have a screw down crown and 300 meters of water resistance. On the back, we have a sapphire crystal display case back. And inside we have the Oris in-house developed caliber 400. It's accurate to minus to plus five seconds a day, which is within COSC tolerances, but it isn't COSC certified. The movement is highly anti-magnetic and has an amazing 120 hours of power reserve, which is five days. The dial is a burst dial and the loom is super luminova and it is super bright as you'd expect. And of course, as with Oris's, this has a 10 year warranty. Oris is a brand I see as an accessible brand along with their products. The products are priced in a very accessible fashion. They're still expensive. They're over a thousand pounds. So uh, well, whichever you go for, they're, they're, it's a lot of money to spend on a watch. The Aquis is Oris's best selling range. It is their flagship range. If you think of Omega and the Seamaster, Rolex and the Submariner, the Aquis is exactly the same model for Oris. So this is their flagship range and this is the first time they've used solid gold, real gold, within their watch, within a commercial offering of a watch, not a limited edition. Uh, but this, at 3,300 pounds, for this specification of in-house developed movement, this build quality, this design, this feel, uh, this specification of case, and then also the fact that you're getting an actual gold bezel for 3,300 pounds, I think is pretty epic. The bracelet is an interesting design. I like the simplicity of it, but also the, the each uh, inner segment, brushed segment of the of the bracelet is kind of arched. It's, it's got like a, a flat triangular section to it in the middle, which is, is, is quite interesting. The bracelet is a solid bracelet. I do like how tapered the bracelet gets. It's, it's quite an aggressive taper, but I do like that. The clasp is solid and it has a bracelet extension, but I would like to see a better functioned 
bracelet extension. This feels solid, so it performs what it needs to do, but I would like to see a micro adjustment within that bracelet extension. Lots of brands at this price point are able to do that. And with this being the flagship watch, I would like to see an on the fly micro adjustment within this bracelet. Now at the start I mentioned that if Rolex pre-owned prices go down or Patek pre-owned prices go down, we see that as a crashing of the market or at least a softening of the market. We use the, the Rolex and Patek and AP prices, the hype prices, as a barometer of what is happening within the grey market. I do think we could use this, the fact that Oris, a brand that positions themselves as an accessible brand, a brand for the people, which is one of their kind of motto things, uh, I see a brand like that putting out a watch with gold on it as a bit of a statement of what's happening within the market. And it's not just Oris. Tudor at Watch of the Wonders this year launched watches with solid gold in, not just gold capping, with actual gold in. Now these brands, they are within the premium level of watches. They aren't within the luxury realm. They are making their products more luxurious, but they aren't luxury branding. And so it's very interesting that that is offering. If we go back a few years, uh, but maybe even to the last Basel world of, of 2018, or, or even just previous launches, we had a lot of brands highlighting that they'd created this package that is very accessible. Look at how much we've packed into this watch at this very affordable or decent accessible price point. IWC launching their pilot's watches with in-house movements rather than ETA movements or sleeter movements, but not putting up the price I think it's increased by maybe 200 quid, 400 quid, but it wasn't a massive price hike. Tudor did the same. A lot of brands were going that route of, look what we can do for this much money. Now, this is still a similar offering of, look what we can do for this much money, but it's really pushing the envelope. It's not going down the way. It's not saying, oh, we've made things cheaper. Putting gold on a watch is very much an act of, how can we make this more expensive? And I think that comes back down to, this is just a guess, but I think that comes back to our spending as a community during COVID. We had more money to spend on watches. We didn't need to just limit ourselves to the steel version of a watch that we would normally buy perhaps, but we had more money to spend. We, had, we weren't going on the holidays, weren't really allowed to drive a car, we weren't allowed to go out and do the normal things that we could. So we had more money to spend on our hobby. So we could push things up a bit. We didn't need to buy the steel version, we could get the gold version. I do think I'm a fan of two-tone. I do think that two-tone is more interesting than steel. That could just be simply because I'm jaded by the wait list around so many steel watches that I think sod it, go for something different. Two-tone is slightly different, it's nothing new. This stuff's been around for ages. But I think the attraction or the popularity is quite new. So I think this is quite an interesting, the route of adding gold. I like it. I'm not saying it's a bad thing, I'm saying it's an interesting thing. What do you guys think? Do you think this is a smart move for Oris? And what do you think about the market? Are you interested in two-tone? Or do you think two-tone's a bit? I mean, there is most definitely an element of 80s estate agent or porn star, not that I know what they were. If you want to give me a follow on Instagram, at Bark and Jack for watches. If you want to check out my photography, it's at I am Barks. If you want to check out my podcast, it's about effing time. And I should have probably plugged some of my straps, although none of the straps would work for this watch. If you want to check out watch straps and watch accessories, jump over to barkandjack.com. I'll see you guys next time. Take care.